Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us again today. We are broadcasting live from Centurion on this beautiful Thursday afternoon, and we're very pleased that you could all join us again for today's introduction to Profnet's preferred broker and underwriter for 2021 regarding medical professional indemnity, the product. Today's webinar is sponsored by Profnet Medical, a company which forms part of the SpaceNet Global Group. And you might remember that during last week's webinar, we had a discussion with Dr. Brad Byra, and we unpacked medical malpractice insurance in more detail and why you need it. Now, should you wish to go and listen to that specific webinar or any of our previous webinars, you can log on on three or four different platforms, which I'm gonna share in the chat functionality with you now. This might include our website, easymed.solutions. There's also a lovely YouTube channel where you can find any of our previous webinars. While I'm talking about, about the chat functionality, do keep in mind that you can talk to us using either the Q&A functionality or the chat functionality. We'll try and keep a close eye on it and, and get to your questions if there's any time during the discussion this afternoon. So I know we're approaching about 600 people that, that registered for today's webinar, and you are, joined by 18 different disciplines, if I'm not mistaken. I believe there's about 140 psychologists. We've got close to 80 physiotherapists. There's about 50 occupational therapists, 30 um, biokineticians. We've got about 40 speech therapists and audiologists. I know there's just over 10 dietitians, over 20 registered counselors, around the same amount of podiatrists, medical orthotists, prosthetists, and then there's a handful of social workers, chiropractors, even a few doctors, and the list goes on. Now, I would quickly like to introduce you to our guest speakers this afternoon, and I'm not going to go into too much detail, as they will be telling you more about their companies and which they represent. But today we have with us, um, I'm going to start with um, Michael Demand. He's the director of Genoa Underwriter Managers. Hello, Michael. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Then we've also got Richard Lynn. He's the Managing Director of Shackleton Risk Management. Welcome, Richard. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for having me. And then a very familiar face. Obviously, it's Dion Beer, the Director of Profnet Medical and the SpaceNet Global Group Executive for Operations. Gentlemen, a warm welcome, and thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Thanks, Lonnie, and good afternoon, gents. Nice to see you guys again. You too, Dion. Thanks for having us. My name is Lani Ace. You should know me by now. I'll be your host in a, in a slightly different capacity this afternoon, but I'm a product manager with the SpaceNet Global Group. And literally, while I was doing introductions and just welcoming everyone this afternoon, I was thinking about a conversation that I had with a healthcare provider just yesterday. I actually went to this, this person for, for therapy with a hip problem. And we had a discussion around medical professional indemnity. And she was asking me, but what has changed in the market? Because there's so many rumors flying around. And why does she now, if she still wants to be a member of her specific society, need to log onto that, that platform, pay her membership fees there, then turn around in a completely different direction and go and source medical malpractice or professional indemnity somewhere else? What have changed? The other question that she asked me was, what sort of additional benefits and value should she be looking for when she chooses an MPI product? And Dion, I think I'm perhaps going to start looking at you to just kick off this conversation. And you can perhaps just explain to the attendees what happened in the industry with regards to MPI, and then also just position the way forward for this afternoon's discussion, if you don't mind. Thanks, Lonnie, um, and thanks again for everyone for joining us on, the, on a Thursday afternoon. It's really nice having you all here. Um, while today's is not a CPD activity, I'm really encouraged by the number of attendees once again. So it's just testament to the fact that uh, healthcare practitioners are out there to get uh, empowered through knowledge and not necessarily just for the CPD point. So thanks again to everyone who's in attendance. Um, I want to reference our, our conversation we had last week, Lani, and as you rightly pointed out, it's uh, there on our website for, for people to go and watch again if they, if they need a refresher on it. 
Um, but essentially, the, the advice I'm not giving is, is certainly not from a legal point of view. And my understanding of the legal framework is, is more about how this impacts on us as practitioners, um, as many of us are healthcare practitioners ourselves. So I think essentially the change in legislation was really speaking to, and this is regulated by the FSCA, um, really relates to the fact that um, prior to changes in legislation some two years ago, um, there was uh, 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 your, your insurance premium collections um, was being affected by... Um, um, by various organizations, uh, membership uh, uh, organizations and others, um, including associations, societies and Profnet. Um, and uh, that collection, the regulation has changed. So those organizations, in fact, can no longer collect uh, insurance premiums, um, even bundled as part of membership benefits um, on behalf of an insurer. And that regulatory change has really been pushed through into the market. Um, we've been working very closely with the FSCA to ensure that we're aligned and, 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 and uh, provide our services appropriately within the legislative framework. And it's that change that you'll see that uh, I myself am a, a physiotherapist um, and I can no longer renew my membership with the Physio Society as I do every year and just tick a box or just say, well, let's bundle in that. I'm directed to say, here's my membership uh, contributions and this is where I go to actually make my insurance payments or, or my premium payments uh, specifically for my insurance. So that's the change. And uh, we're seeing that ripple effect right through the market. Um, and again, you know, I think with any kind of change, there's uh, can be seen as a threat or it can be seen as an opportunity. Um, we've certainly from ProfNet side leaned into this and said, what is the best way to handle this? We understand the journey of the user or the member of a different of various associations or societies. Um, and we're trying to streamline that as much as possible. And so we're really super excited. Uh, some, some people may have logged in just before we actually broadcast when we did and, and realized we, we're speaking hot off the press here. Um, you know, things are changing all the time, but we're certainly leaning into this. Uh, we're looking for the opportunities for our um, association societies that we assist and manage and work with. We're finding ways to empower these associations and societies um, and to continue to get uh, great benefits, uh, enhance those benefits even more. Um, and, and actually just flex our product offering in line with the legislative framework. So, uh, so we're quite excited. We'll share some of it. We wish we could share more, um, but uh, it's interesting time. So, so we'll unpack exactly where we find ourselves at this time. But again, I think we're leaning into this and we're certainly embracing the opportunities it presents. Thank you so much, Dion. Um, mm. James, I'm not sure who wants to have a stab at this first. Maybe Richard, I'm looking in your direction, just from a, an insurer and a reinsurer point of view. Do you maybe mind kicking off this conversation or following the on? Mm. Um, sure thing. I mean, just to give everyone context with regards to how the structure of, of insurance works, you've got a brokerage firm, which, which um, in the context of today, Shackleton Risk Management, they're the people who deal with you directly, um, brokers and so forth, who are responsible for giving you advice regarding your policy, regarding uh, what limits you should take, um, explaining the differences in covers um, which you come across, things like claims made, occurrence based, um, retroactive dates, all these fancy terms and which I'm sure confuse most people. Um, so that's kind of the role that the broker plays within the market. Um, they're the person who you will know personally, and they're the person who will place your cover um, with the most appropriate local insurance company, which best matches um, the risk which you are exposed to. So that's the broker's role. Um, if you take a step up, um, you know, under, underwriting managers is what's called a UMA. Uh, for all intents and purposes, um, they are the insurer. Um, they're the ones administering policies and um, actually dealing with the risk. Um, so behind them is Sapphire Insurance Company, which is the official in insurance company. General underwriting managers just acts on their behalf. Um, standing behind Sapphire Insurance Company is, um, in their case, Munich uh, Reinsurance Company, which is a global reinsurance company um, who essentially stands surety for your claims. Um, there's a risk sharing. Um, arrangement between the insurer and the reinsurer uh, with regards to who pays what percentage of the claims and Michael John Deman can potentially elaborate more on that regard. Um, over sure. to you, Michael. So Richard, if I just before we get to Michael, I just want to try and understand this. I'm a, I'm a humble practitioner. So um, from a practitioner's side, uh, essentially, if I'm reaching out and saying, uh, who do I contact? I need insurance. Then what you're saying is that's the likes of yourselves. That's the broker. That's the person who I can phone and say, I'm looking for insurance. Um, I think I might, it might be at risk, but please explain to me what this means. There's, there's wording here that I don't understand. Claims made, I don't understand. 
and you guys are the right guys to actually give that advice. Is that correct? Exactly, Dion. So the broker's role is primarily actually an advice position. Um, the broker's there to explain how a policy works to you and to find an insurance product which suits your specific needs and to find a local insurance company um, who will best match your risk profile. So the person who you know and the person who you should approach is your broker. Uh, in this instance and in, in this structure um, with regards to today's talk, Shackleton Risk Management is a brokerage firm and we're here to assist you with regards to any advice and facing of your insurance product. Fantastic. So, so we often find ourselves in a position where somebody would phone us as a client of Profnet or a member of an association or society will we'll call them and say, please give me advice. I need to know, should I be taking cover for five or 10 million? Um, what is the difference between uh, one product and another and the policy wording? And uh, I think we've all been very well scripted to be told you're not a financial services provider. You may not offer financial advice. Um, and uh, I guess, is, is that saying that the advice that you give as a broker is, is, is bespoke to and, and specific to the broker and that there's legislation against anybody else giving this sort of advice. Exactly, Dion. So there's something called the FSCA, which is a local regulatory body, which basically regulates any financial service provider, you know, which there, there are many different types of financial services providers. Insurance broking is one aspect. We are accountable to the regulator. We have to produce compliance documents where we prove that we have given advice, we've done comparisons for the practitioner, we've discussed the limits they need, we've discussed the type of product they, they have, we've done a comparison between what the practitioner currently has and what we might be offering to them, and we need to prove and be accountable to the regulator that we have acted in the, in the practitioner's best interest and we have empowered them with all the relevant facts and information for the practitioner to make an informed decision. Okay, so so it's probably a nice segue now into 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 Michael's conversation. But so so part of that is so you're the go-to guy. But when I look at my policy wording, and you're going, but you can see that this will pay out under these conditions, and we do cover for A, B, and C. Um, that policy wording is 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 that managed by the underwriters to say, hang on, let's try and enrich our policy wording. Let's try and get something sexy and new, something that addresses our current challenges. Is that where the underwriters come in? Exactly. Absolutely, I think, I think Dion. So there's a it, it's a joint collaboration between between brokers and in some way as well as the underwriters. But medical malpractice is a is a is a very very misunderstood area in in South Africa, and um, it is also highly competitive. So expertise and finding expertise in the liability space are very very important, and that's where um, a brokerage relies on an underwriter to create a bespoke wording that includes a lot of bells and whistles, which ensure that ultimately the client, mm -hmm. um, being the practitioners here in the room today, have a wide level of cover that allows them to enjoy um, protection. Right. Uh, as these policies develop, you will find that um, underwriters are jostling to ensure that they are the preferred wording of choice. And there's a lot of IP that goes into it. Um, in order to ensure that, uh, that, 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 the, that the client is, is ultimately protected. And then of course, it's the role of the broker to explain those intricacies to, to, to the members. Mm -hmm. so, so, I mean, this is, this is often the determinant or the, the distinguishing factor, I guess, when it comes to various policies that are available in the market. Um, I as an allied healthcare professional or I as a HPCSA registered practitioner, um, I as a physiotherapist, biokineticist, psychologist, um, would then go to market and say to my broker, present, with me, present me a couple of different options or go to various brokers and say, show me what you've got and explain this to me so I can make an informed decision. And it's really based on that policy wording and the, the, the benefits of one over the other or the, the additional cover one over the other that should be informing uh, uh, my, my policy of choice, right? Absolutely, Dion. So, so the role of the broker is basically to sift through large volume uh, of content, basically the policy puddings is what I'm referring to, and then to ultimately present the best product to, to, to the members. Um, Genoa Underwriting Managers has, has, has taken a lot of time to ensure that we have created a bespoke wording which deals with either our specialist base well, alternatively, we, we, we are as well uh, developing a, a, a policy wording which is specifically bespoke to allied practitioners such as those in the room. 
Um, mm. as, as, as the discussion progresses today, and I'm sure Lani will highlight it for me, but I'll, I'll, I'll bring up some of, the, some of the important differences that we are that we're in the process of negotiating. The allied practitioners historically have had a relatively wide level of cover, but uh, we believe that what we can bring to the party and bring to the table is something that is going to give uh, the people that work with us a, a, a market edge. Mm -hmm. so, so, I mean, we were hoping to, uh, uh, right here, right now, sort of share a lot of this information. Um, and I know I think just as a, as a, as a, as a backdrop to, the, to, 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 to what's brought us to this point for all the listeners um, is that um, we really have stepped into, Profnet firstly has, has, most, has entered into a strategic partnership um, with Genoa and Shackleton to try and understand what more can be done. How can we further advance the offerings that are currently available in the market? Um, number one, so what can we do as far as the actual policy benefits goes? What can we do as far as the pricing of those benefits goes? Um, how can we make sure that we actually address the current challenges that we face? What we faced five years ago, right from um, uh, uh, forensic reviews to the legislative changes, um, to our practice exposures, to exchange rates and product liability, uh, all of these things have changed. And uh, we've actually taken this opportunity as a pause point and said, let's have a look at this. What can we do differently and how can we actually challenge the current status quo? So. So we're very excited. We, we are waiting for final um, uh, approvals and sign off. But uh, these things, when you, when you start stretching these limits and challenging status quo, um, take a little bit longer. So uh, uh, Michael, uh, how, how are we doing as far as, as, as that engagement goes? And, 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 and what can you share with us? Dion, uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> there, there are a number of things that we can share with you today. And obviously there, there's been a lot of collaboration with our, with our reinsurance partners. Mm -hmm. uh, just for, for ease of reference for your members who are on, on the call today, Genoa Underwriting Managers is the first company in South Africa to support or to receive the support of Munich Re, the world's leading and largest reinsurance company. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe their balance sheet is in excess of about three or four trillion rand, and um, they're literally the size of some, some economies in, uh, worldwide. Um, yeah. Munich have worked with us uh, specifically in the medical malpractice space because of a long track record that we've had with them. Uh, oh. I, haven't, I haven't actually mentioned this to the members yet, but just by way of introduction, Genoa Underwriting Managers is an absolutely liability focused underwriter. What we mm -hmm. do is professional indemnity insurance for professionals like yourselves. You're not, if we were to be approached on insuring your house or your car or your grandmother, uh, that's not really uh, the, the area we play in. We mm -hmm. specifically deal with professional indemnity insurances. So when you deal with us, you can, be, you can rest assured that you are dealing with market experts. Um, so just, just some of the, if we start scraping the surface in terms of, uh, of, of policy um, additions that, that we're looking at, um, we'd look to increase the, the level of uh, aggregate liability that, that a lot of, uh, a lot of the, the, the current programs have. Um, mm -hmm. We ensure, so what that means basically is we will allow practitioners who historically have been limited to, to, a, to a limit of indemnity of up to 10 million rand, we give you the option to take additional cover should you want. So we can now quote up to, to uh, in the region of 15 million rand per practitioner. That just mm -hmm. gives those ultra conservative practitioners the ability to, to access um, at competitive premiums, uh, additional limits, uh, limits of cover. Um, our HPCSA defense costs. Now I know that that's a major headache for a large number of your practitioners. And the right. HPCSA, from our perspective at least, is where ultimately a claim for professional negligence is going to be framed against, um, against a, a, a practitioner. Right. We will include uh, legal defense uh, from, from the get-go. So there's a hand-holding process. I mean, it's a, it's a very, very stressful time for the practitioners and we will, we will, we will lawyer up basically mm -hmm. from the moment that a practitioner needs to face an HPCSA inquiry and we will hold the hand all the way through the process, ultimately, we hope, in, uh, in reducing a negative result and, and mm -hmm. assisting the practitioner through that enti entirely stressful process. Yeah. Um, we, we're looking at being able to we know that um, particularly in the time of COVID that we're coming out of, that uh, premiums 
uh, and, and balance sheets are incredibly tight. So, so we've looked to, to um, negotiate a monthly premium option for, for practitioners just to try and ease some of the uh, financial burden that these medical malpractice premiums uh, bring with them. Sure. Um, a nice thing for a lot of the ladies in the room who are, who are thinking of or who um, uh, already are pregnant is that um, our policy includes a premium holiday. Um, and what that allows you to do is in the event that you uh, are pregnant or alternatively on maternity leave, the policy remains in force and we can give you three months in which uh, your policy benefits remain in place. However, there's no premium payment that's payable. That's mm. something that's very, very unique and, and, and a, a huge requirement, not a huge requirement, but a, a very nice requirement to include in the policy. Similarly, the, the, um, that premium holiday will, will trigger in the event that um, a practitioner perhaps becomes um, falls seriously ill. Alternatively, they go abroad to, to study and go on some form of a sabbatical. There are various elements that will trigger that, that extension, and it's a very, very nice one to have um, in, in a policy. Dion, you want me to carry going on, or uh, do you want me to stop for a bit and pause, and uh, we can go to additional benefits? Michael, I've got, a, I've got a quick question, if you don't mind. I just want to make 100% sure. sure I understood you correct. It's about two or three benefits ago. You talk yes. about monthly payments. Does this mean yes. you pay for your MPI on a monthly, monthly basis and you don't have to do an annual payment again? Absolutely, Lani. So, so uh, that, that, that in itself has been a massive um, uh, barrier to entry um, in getting right. But yes, I can confirm that... Uh, that the generic products that we offer to both the specialist and allied markets currently allow our practitioners to pay on a monthly basis, which obviously solves the headache and the, and the difficulty of making that large lump sum payment mm. up front. Especially now in this economic climate where I think a lot of people are still not back to 100% utilization in their healthcare practices. So that's a wonderful sure. thing. Thank you. Yeah, Michael, your, your question, do I want you to continue? I'd love to. And just that everybody knows, we actually prepared and had this whole sort of compare to say, okay, what is currently typically in market? What are we doing differently? Um, but as a, again, I just want to reiterate, we've been quite radical in our approach there. So um, what we do want to do is just um, uh, slow it down and, and just get the final sign-offs from various role, uh, role players in the, in the, in the, in the chain. Um, and then uh, we, we really are excited to share all of that in a lot more detail with everybody. As soon as we have that, that's going to be in the next couple of days, not weeks. So, so Sorry, we are excited. everyone. I was, uh, I was getting ahead of myself. Uh, there, there are yeah. a number of benefits that we would love to share with you. <laughs> Is there anything else you do want to share, Michael? <laughs> <laughs> Dion, I've got twins at home. <laughs> so the bags are under the eyes. Um, no, 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 I'm joking. Um, just, just that, um, yeah. Janoy is uh, is passionate about about the medical malpractice industry. It's a, it's a space that we've been operating in for a, for a number of years now, and where we've built a very very nice uh, footprint. Um, something that that I think is very very important, and I did briefly mention it, but the Janoy product um, allows the practitioners access to the top medical defence in South Africa which are the likes of Mac Robert Attorneys, Norton Rose Fulbright, Weber Wenzel, Clyde & Co, and Garlic and & Bowsfield. That is essential for you guys so that you know that you have the right team batting in your corner when uh, these vexatious uh, attorneys or vexatious claimants do, mm. do come against you. Mm -hmm. Michael, if I may, there was a, a, a question that came in and I think Richard kindly answered that for us. So Richard, yes, maybe I you have. can unmute yourself and do you mind reading the question and then just posing the answer as well? Because I don't think all the attendees can actually see that. Sure thing. So the question was, if one immigrated, obviously if registered in that country eventually, would you be able to ensure a practitioner in their new country? So. I'll leave Mike or John to answer the second part of that, but what I can confirm is the way that the policy works, if you were to immigrate, Genoa's policy would give you runoff cover for your South African exposure. So you would have done all this work during your insurance period. Sometimes there can be a delay between when, you, when the incident of malpractice um, happens and when the claims brought against you. So you would immigrate and you would enjoy free runoff cover, which you're not billed for. It's built into your policy of five years. Um, you would have the option to extend it if you felt you needed to, so that you would leave. And if there was a claim brought against you in South Africa, 
Genoa's policy would still cover you for that. Um, so I can confirm that. So you will always be covered for your South African exposure. Um, and Michael John can, can comment with regards to um, worldwide cover. Sorry, guys, if you could, if you could perhaps just explain, I, I don't know where the questions popped up. I've got a question and answer thing and I've got a question from Andre Fisser and uh, Zodwa, but I didn't pick up the question that Richard's referring to. Where will I find that so, one? I didn't. So, Michael, the, the question is, if one immigrated, um, would you be able to ensure you, as in Genoa, ensure the practitioner in their new country? I've just spoken to runoff cover locally, where the policy yep. will give them runoff for their South African exposure, but I'm just handing over to you to talk about their, um, their new position internationally. Yeah, thank, thanks for clarifying that, Rich. Um, the, the short answer is that the, the uh, territorial limits of the, South Af of the Genoa policy are within the borders of South Africa and that we do not uh, cover abroad. The exception to that rule, however, is where a practitioner goes um, and works abroad for, for a short period of time. Um, be it be it thirty days or less, I believe is the is the, um, is, the, is, the is the period. It may be slightly longer, and I'm sorry, I'm blushing a bit. Here. I should know this, but I could pose that question to one of our underwriters. But in the event that you were to go abroad for thirty days, um, and it was an allied specific discipline, uh, then yes, our policy would respond. Um, should you have immigrated, and uh, and it's obviously not for a short period of time, then what you would be encouraged to do, and what we would recommend to enjoy full cover is, is that you would take out a policy in the jurisdiction that you that you then find yourself in. Yeah, I think I think just to just to compound on that, it's it's quite important to understand that if you leave, you have worked in South Africa and there is exposure and 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 risk for that work that you've done. So the Genoa product will cover you even though you have now immigrated you still might have exposure locally and Genoa's product will offer you runoff cover. Even though you stop paying them premium, they will still cover you for five years beyond immigrating. And if you want to extend that period of time, you can, of course. Um, but it's important to understand that your South African exposure will be covered even beyond your immigration. Thanks, Richard. And I think you've explained it a bit there. I think we sometimes have to slow down. You guys are so so well versed in the, in the insurance terminology. Uh, just that South African exposure or South African risk, I think we pause and go, what do you mean by that? And uh, just so that I can make sure I understand, that's essentially if I'm treating patients here in South Africa till the end of 2020 and in 2021, I decide to go abroad. And near the end of next year, I suddenly get this phone call to say a patient is, has taken exception to an account or taken exception to a treatment that was done. And suddenly I'm going, I'm trying to make a new life for myself overseas. But now suddenly I'm brought back here and I'm wondering, I haven't been paying premiums. I'm at risk now. This is the first time I hear of this. And suddenly I'm gulping, wondering if I've actually got cover in place. And you're essentially exactly, saying that yeah. the cover is the period of time in which yeah. I stop looking over so my shoulder. So if I, if I can just draw a quick timeline, you yeah. are with Genoa from the 1st of January, 2020. You are with them until the 1st of January, 2025, at which point in time you immigrate, uh, you stop paying your premium. In 2027, you receive a summons from a disgruntled patient saying that you um, massage them too hard and <laughs> cause bruising in their neck uh, or whatever the case may be. That claim, which, which is a valid claim, um, will still be covered by Genoa's product because of the fact that they've offered you runoff cover free of charge, inclusive in your robust product, which is, which is why Genoa is, is a current market leader. That's quite a bit of peace of mind, eh? Definitely, definitely. Sure. Um, Michael, there was another question that came up with regards to the, the pregnancy benefit, if I can call it that, and I hope I'm not throwing you under the bus here. But Audrey asked, um, was, will this benefit also come into play if you decide to adopt or even foster? Because the recommendation is that you should take at least six weeks off when you do either of those two things. Um, so, Andre, uh, answering that question for you, the policy wording specifically specifies that in the event of pregnancy, temporary serious illness or disability, whichever occurs after the commencement of insurance, um, then the, those are the areas that trigger the, trigger the premium holiday. We've never actually been approached on, on the question of whether um, an adoption would trigger, the, would trigger it, because um, of course you would, be, you would be entitled to maternity leave. Um, that would be an approach that you that you would come through to us on, and um, 
speaking slightly out of turn, I would say that that would be something that we'd be open to considering. I think another thing that is happening more and more these days are online treatment or, or telehealth, if you want to put it that way. It, yep. Will people be insured for that? Absolutely. Our, uh, our policy wording does trigger with regards to telemedicine and telehealth. As everyone will know, the, um, it's probably one of the major benefits of COVID uh, is that uh, the world was forced to advance quite quickly in terms of how we communicate with, with people, either from a, a, in, a, in a business environment, alternatively, uh, medical practitioners dealing with, um, with their patients. Um, and, and yes, so the, the Genoa policy wording does, does, does um, look at, at telemedicine and it is an extension that we offer um, to ensure that, um, provided of course, the telemedicine services that you're offering are provided within your normal scope of work. Uh, yeah. that, that of course is a disclaimer that comes in. You can't have a, um, a physiotherapist who is uh, practicing as a GP, as an example. Michael, I think what's equally important is obviously uh, with all these policies is you have to act within your regulatory framework. So Absolutely. if you read the HPCSA, obviously be cognizant of what the HPCSA regulation states. And we have covered this in quite a few webinars before, is that uh, if, if you're going to treat a patient in another country, you have to be registered in both the country that you are residing in as a practitioner, as well as the country in which the patient finds themselves. So that there's ethical uh, and regulatory jurisdiction over both parties. Um, you need to be registered in both countries um, and, uh, and then ensure that you comply with your, with your regulator. Because uh, I guess once you step out of your regulator's um, requirements, uh, that could impact on the, on the policy uh, paying out. For sure. Yeah. I think there was a question. Um, from... Lani, I see. Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. No, there was a question from Marianda as well, which relates to, to you know, overseas citizens. Let's say as a registered provider in South Africa, you're treating here, but you're treating a patient who is coming from overseas. Will, will you be covered for that as well? So, guys, the, the importance here in, ask, in answering Marianda's question is, provided it is not shown that the practitioner was touting for business abroad. If that practitioner, oh, sorry, patient, or um, is here on holiday, they're in Cape Town, and they decide uh, they've tweaked their neck and they need to go to the chiropractor, of course, you're absolutely not restricted from, um, from seeing that practitioner or that patient, provided, of course, that you're acting again within the course and scope of your practice. Mm -hmm. I see Zodwa has asked a question to us as well, which I'm sure is on the lips of a, a lot of the practitioners in the room, which That's is any thing. estimation on, on the premiums. Um, Zodwa, what I could say there is that uh, uh, at this stage, it, it is premature to, to address that question, but we are actively sourcing a solution that we hope um, the, the ProfNet members will, will, be, will be very satisfied with. I if, I can, if I can maybe come in there, uh, Zodwa, one of the core things, and we've we obviously been very close to the market and understanding what these pressures are. And one of them are, and, and it's one that I've been wrestling with for some time. And in fact, what ProfNet has done historically is gone and said, the insurers have come to us and underwriters saying to, historically that, sorry, you've got to pay for the whole year up front in one go. Now, for some uh, healthcare practitioners, that can be quite a sum of money and really impact on your, on your pocket. So what we've done historically um, is, is pay that up front for, for the healthcare provider and then recover that over the 12 months at our own risk to try and support healthcare practitioners mm -hmm. through that process. Um, uh, with, the, with the regulatory framework as it currently stands, we can no longer do that. So apologies for that. We, we wish we could, but we can't. Um, and, uh, and there's various legal reasons why and, and, and some things that have happened historically um, in the industry that has impacted on that ruling. However, we've, we've not left it there. So uh, Zodo, we definitely went forwards. I think that some of the, one of the key reasons we've engaged with both Shackleton and Genoa strategically is because they came to the table and said, we're more than happy to consider um, a, a 12 month payment on that because we understand the impact of that, that large sum of money up front. Um, so, so that's part of the fees that we've, that we've uh, been able to at least engage with uh, uh, quite, quite strongly on behalf of, of, of the uh, healthcare practitioners. Um, but what that quantum is, again, um, we're going we're gonna to give that to you as soon as we have final sign-off. We, we're very close. We've actually got a very good indication. Um, and I can tell you that it is extremely competitive um, and uh, an exceptional value. So um, 
and, and also the, the ability to pay that over 12 months rather than a lump sum. So we will let you know as soon as we've got that final sign off, it's very close. Um, and obviously that premium must also be looked at in line with the actual benefits that that brings. Um, but you're certainly going to get more value for money. Sorry, sorry, I'm asking the same Catherine, question, Michael. <laughs> Catherine Stain's uh, question, which um, Catherine, you're you're a clinical psychologist who, as I understand it, are currently treating um, patients from overseas, um, but they're based overseas, if I'm not mistaken. You're using telemedicine to treat them, as I'm understanding your question. Um, that that does prove prove difficult. Um, I know that uh, most uh, medical practice insurers uh, will restrict that. Um, the the patient that you that you have to be seeing, you have to be domiciled in South Africa when seeing seeing that patient, um, and and the patient has to be has to be in in the borders of South Africa. Um, so your question is, what insurance will cover this? I personally am unsure of the answer to that. However, I'm going to take it down and uh, I'll, I'll address it with our underwriters and um, through the ProfNet channel, they can, um, they can give you some, uh, some feedback on that question. Apologies for not being able to answer as clearly as you would like, um, but uh, I know that our, our team will definitely be able, will, will have a response for that for you. Yeah, you just want to add on to that. Yeah, two things. I think the first one is I'm, I'm overwhelmed by the Q&A as it's running there and I really do encourage that. So thank you everyone for your inputs. But I also want to just make a commitment now is that um, our approach going forwards is not just one to say how do we get the best price for the best uh, cover, um, but also how do we step into the space to also continue to assist healthcare practitioners to not have to use their malpractice insurance? How do we help them to protect themselves from these exposures? Um, uh, empowering them with patient practice contracts, empowering you with uh, 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 HR documents and processes within your practice, and, and furthermore, more of these webinars. Um, so you'll be seeing a, a program coming out shortly where um, we'll have the likes of um, uh, our previous speaker, uh, Dr. Brad Byra, um, um, as well as uh, um, uh, Michael and Richard. Uh, to actually help us navigate and continue to engage with the markets to say, what are the risks? How do we handle that? What can you do proactively to avoid these risks? So I think that's important because that not only helps us as health practitioners, it also helps us keep premiums under control, make them uh, uh, more affordable. So, so watch the space. We will be continuing this as, a, as an intended uh, uh, program. And then there's a, there's, a, there's a question there that I think is very important that I just loop back in on, and that was from Anonymous, just saying, what about for non-ProfNet members? What could premiums be? Now, I want to reiterate a point that we made clear from the start of, of ProfNet six years ago, um, and that is that we're in the business of empowering associations and societies. Um, we never before did offer malpractice insurance to, to any discipline where that cover was in fact already afforded them through their associational society. Um, because we understand that people go to their associations and societies and say one of the key reasons is because of my malpractice insurance. So we never even offered it in those disciplines. That's why we limited it to the disciplines we offered. Now, unfortunately, the associations and societies, just like ProfNet, cannot offer that malpractice insurance bundled into their fees, their membership fees or their client fees. Mm -hmm. um, but we are looking at alternatives on how we can do that. What you can rest assured, Anonymous, is that um, we will respect and, and, and actually encourage um, uh, membership to associations and societies. And uh, where you are a member of your association or society, we will have preferential pricing in that space um, to encourage that and to support um, where we can uh, 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 assist with that. I don't know, Michael, if there's something you want to add to that. But uh, for us, that's strategically very important. Yeah, um, we, would, we would share those thoughts with you, Dion. Um, the associations play a vital role. Um, they're, they're very important uh, in our eyes as well. And, and naturally, as with the associations, they often bring scale. So from an underwriting perspective, when you have scale, you can obviously uh, create efficiencies with regards to the pricing for, for those members. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so I share your views. I see, the, I see the next question here is from Fahim uh, regarding the recommended cover for hospital-based physiotherapists. So I suppose to me that strikes me as a two-part question and a good question. Um, when you're working at a hospital, a hospital will have their own insurance cover. Um, that's because the hospital is liable in their own right because they're providing facilities and they're providing 
all the infrastructure for, for practitioners to, to perform their work. And there's, of course, risk um, attaching to that. You know, I think post-operative um, care by nurses and things like that. There's a lot that can go wrong. And, and because of it, they have got their own insurance policy. However, it's very important to understand that that will not necessarily mean that you don't need malpractice insurance. Firstly, hospitals will frequently follow up with you to make sure that you do have medical malpractice insurance. And if you don't, they, are, they, they, they do put quite severe pressure on you to get it. Um, simply because when a claim happens, um, the claimant will claim from the hospital and often the practitioner individually, so they'll sue both parties. And if the practitioner does not have their own insurance, then the hospital's insurance plan has to cover both claims essentially, or they can leave you high and dry that would be a decision that the hospital would make. But then going back to, I suppose, the second part of that question is the limit. Um, for me personally, in the allied space, going above 10 million rand limit is um, highly conservative. Um, I wouldn't recommend going below maybe 2 million. So, you know, you can, you can pick a number in that range. I think above 10 million rand um, is a lot. It, it's, the likelihood of a claim exceeding 10 million in the allied space is remote and Michael John could perhaps elaborate a bit more with regards to that. Of course, if you're in the surgery categories and above, you, you certainly need limits over 10 million for sure. But in the allied space, I'd recommend under 10 million, but certainly above one or 2 million. So that would be my range. For physio, it would depend on the type of work you're doing. Um, not all physios are the same. Not, not, not any two doctors have got the same risk profile because they perform different work and it will depend on your split of work and your unique position. Sure. If I may, Dion, just before you start, um, as I think as the attendees can definitely hear you, someone like Richard is, is fully equipped to give you sound advice and deal facts with you. So I just want to put two email addresses in the chat functionality. The one will be for broker advice, which is going to go to medmal at srisk.co.za. And at this stage, if you just want to show and you express your interest in an MPI, then please contact info at profnetmedical.co.za. Um, I will share that information with you again, and I'm going to try and put it up onto the screen as well so that you can see it physically, because sometimes people don't have access to the chat functionality. But I will share that again. Sorry, sorry, Dion, I think I interrupted you. Uh, thanks, Lonnie. So, so I think, again, two points. Uh, the one is, obviously, we can't give uh, any advice relating to yeah. what cover you should get. I'm sitting here jealously listening to Richard saying, I recommend you do this and, um, and amounts of that. We've always got a, a vach for uns mont. We've always got a guard in front of our mouths to stop us from saying that as much as you want to kind of give that advice, but we're not registered to do so or, or appropriately trained to do that. So thanks for that, Richard. So any of that kind of advice, please do reach out directly to, to, to um, Shackleton at MedMill at srisk.co.za. The expression of interest, if I can just uh, maybe just spend a, a few minutes on that, a few seconds on that, is that we'll obviously send out communication as soon as we finalized our, our discussions uh, through Genoa um, to, to, to get fantastic policy wording and pricing for you. Um, and we will send that out to, to ProfNet members, but we'd love to send it out broader than that. We're obviously engaging with various associations and societies as well to see what we can assist them with. Um, but further to that, if you're interested in that and you don't find yourself on one of those distribution lists, uh, please do just drop a mail just saying MPI in the subject line uh, and, and we will then uh, add you to that. And you then doing that as an expression of interest so that as soon as you've got more information, we can share that directly with you. And then you can uh, weigh that up and make, uh, make your own decisions on, on where you feel you're going to get the best, uh, uh, best value for money and best product. So, so I encourage you to. But I want to just go back to, to one other point we made. And there was a lot of focus on what happens if I go overseas and I've got uh, retroactive cover that covers me in South Africa. But it, may, it might sound obvious, but please be sure that if you do go overseas, that you in fact do take up medical mal, um, malpractice insurance in that country. So you're covered for any events that are happening while you're providing services there um, going forward. So just be sure that you've got cover that's gonna pick up while you're uh, treating patients in that territory. So I think I'll, I'll answer Francois's question, Michael, and then you can answer Rogan. So Francois, just to talk to your question regarding retroactive cover, um, within medical malpractice insurance, you've got two different types of covers. Um, the first is an occurrence-based offering. Um, the second is called a claims-made-based offering. If you are moving from an occurrence-based product, 
you do not need retroactive cover. That is because that insurer will cover you for the claims. And basically, you don't need retroactive cover. If you're moving from a claims made offering to another claims made offering, your broker, and this is why it is really important to, to consult knowledgeable brokers, your broker needs to identify the fact that you are moving from a claims made offering to another claims made offering, and they need to make sure that they make the effective date, the retroactive date, match when you first started your original claims made offering. So let's say you were with a claims made insurance product from the 1st of January, 2015, and then you switch to another one on the 1st of January, 2020, your broker would need to advise the insurer that this client needs retroactive cover backdated to the 1st of January, 2015, which in essence means the new insurer will cover you for all work done from 1 January 2015 onwards and not from 1 January 2020 onwards. And that is, that is completely vital because if you don't include retroactive cover, you can be left exposed and you can have a gap in your cover. And that is, that is a nightmare because essentially you can be on your own for a claim. And this is why it is, it is paramount to consult people who understand the market because if you don't, you can be left high and dry, and that's the last thing that anyone deserves. Um, it's not your job to understand insurance back to front. It's the broker's job to, um, and that's why I just want to reiterate, it is so important to partner up with a brokerage firm that understands liability insurance. Don't go to your broker who does your car insurance. They don't understand this market, um, and it's just not what they do. Uh, Richard, I want to ask you just a prime question there, if you don't mind. I hope I'm not putting you on the spot. But as a brokerage, I mean, uh, we often have here of brokerages that have got an office, you know, uh, situated somewhere in a, in, a, in a residential area and they're running it from there. What is Shackleton's footprint and, 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 and staff complement? And, and how do you actually reach out? Because people aren't always going to be able to speak to you directly. You're only one person. Sure. What's your sure. So, so Shackleton Risk um, employs 75 people across nine offices around South Africa, uh, which includes all the metros. Um, so we're well equipped to deal with you no matter where you are. Uh, we also have got satellite um, representation in the smaller areas like a Kimberley uh, or Polokwane. We also have satellite representation there. Um, so you can be rest assured that we have got the reach to deal with you um, and we have the infrastructure to, to deal with you no matter where you are. And we've got a, a huge team of brokers around the country who can, who can give you a personal service and who understand this market. Uh, and, and, and I suppose, to elaborate on that, Shackleton Risk is part of the Greater Shackleton Group of companies, um, which employs over 400 people across the country. Uh, where we've got other businesses where we do life insurance and we buy non-performing loans from from commercial banks and things like that. So it's a really well diversified and large group of financial services companies which have been around uh, since 2002. So. Um, there's no concern regarding um, being a small fry or being a fly by night. This is a big corporation that you're dealing with, um, with ample resources to deal with all of your concerns and problems. So are you saying that, and I don't want to encourage everyone to do that, but are you saying that if I, as a policy holder, want to have a conversation, I can actually speak to somebody face to face? Of course. So if you visit, visit our, our, our website, www.shackletonrisk.coza, or you can just Google Shackleton Risk, you'll find it there. If you click on um, people and you've got a service team, there's a full directory of our brokers countrywide, which is split into the different metros and different cities where they are, and there's descriptions with regards to what products they offer. So no matter what you're looking for, even if you've got other friends, accountants, attorneys, architects, whatever it might be, we can cover all professional people. Um, so look on our website, you can find people there, and there's a warm body on the other side who can talk to you and actually have a conversation with you. Fantastic. Um, there was a, a follow-on question here. There's, there's two, in fact. Um, I'll leave the, these to Michael. Maybe, maybe Michael can answer Rogan and Anonymous. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Dion, were you, were you talking about Teresa's, Teresa Rogan's um, uh, yeah. question about cyber? Yes. You could answer that. I'll answer the Anonymous one. Okay, fantastic. Um, so, Teresa, the, um, the short answer to your question is that the existing Genoa policy for medical malpractice providers, uh, sorry, for medical professionals, does not, um, does not cover cyber. 
Shackleton, however, as a uh, an all-encompassing broker, uh, I am I am uh, aware of the fact that there is a cyber facility that they could potentially uh, assist you with, which writes into Lloyd's of London. Um, however, the existing product that we don't that we that we offer does not include cyber currently. It's it's, it's quite a that would be an add-on. MJ, it is quite a specialized space, isn't it? The whole cyber liability, and it's something quite, I wouldn't say relatively new, isn't it? And, and we need to be aware and cognizant of that. So perhaps a, a dedicated session on cyber liability is, is something we can look at. And Richard, maybe uh, with your large footprint, is something we can uh, e explore in a bit more detail too. Huh? 100%. Sure, I so. mm. what, what, what I can mention here, which goes along in the cyber vein, which mm. is an extension that our policy includes, um, is, is the access to impersonation fraud cover. So that currently, and I don't mean to scare the, the attendees in a, in, at the event, but impersonation fraud cover is a huge risk that practitioners are currently facing and professionals are currently facing. To summarize what exactly it is, it's where someone outside of your practice impersonates a client of your practice. And through that impersonation, they coerce a member of your team who's acting in good faith to transfer funds from your business account back to that mm. um, imposter. Now, this, it's, it's, uh, it, it's a fraud that uh, is rife in South Africa currently. Um, so if anything, take away from this, uh, this webinar that you guys must try and be uh, alert to the fact that this is, uh, this is something that is happening and that people are getting swindled out of a lot of money. So yeah. that's an impersonation fraud product, which again, beyond perhaps when you do the cyber product, we can talk specifically to that one, but yeah. that's an entire product in its own uh, mm -hmm. and something that where we've seen large claim events, which have been materializing. Okay. All right. Um, thank, thanks for that, uh, MJ. The, the, the question there from Anonymous, when hospitals request the confirmation of malpractice, it's been difficult getting confirmation of malpractice insurance cover. And the admin is quite a nightmare. So that sends the question about independent pra uh, malpractice. So what I can say from our perspective is that um, it is obviously very important that we empower people to be able to access their proof of malpractice insurance cover. Um, it's a formal document that is signed and says you are covered from this day to this date. And um, we've in fact empowered various associations and societies through our technology platforms and membership management systems to actually allow the member to actually log in and draw their own proof of cover. Um, and that's what we've done historically. Um, going forward, it's important that you engage with a broker who is able to provide that service. Um, and, um, and, and Shackleton, I think, Richard, on your side, I think that's an important part that you're, you've got a team of 70 plus that can, in fact, respond to those requests. Because by the time a, a, a practitioner needs that, it's not usually because they feel like filing it away and they just want to get their work in order. They're usually being pressed by somebody to say, we need your proof of cover before you can be employed or before you can work in this hospital. For sure. And I think, I think that is the advantage of dealing with South African insurance companies and South African brokers is that the, the service delivery is just completely different. Um, we've got a real company that is mm -hmm. here in this country with real people who can respond and get you things like that overnight, uh, which is just a completely different model to, I suppose, the historical players within the space. And it, it, I suppose, drove the need for different offerings uh, because there was just a, a huge gap in terms of not having a local offering and, and, and having no form of service or, or, or personal touch to what was going on and, and what's a very serious topic um, for, for all practitioners. Absolutely. Thanks for that. I'm gonna, um, I know that behind those banners, uh, Lani is probably doing some uh, um, non-verbals there that we are running short on time. Uh, there she is. She's going to appear any second now. Um, but just a quick answer then. Hello, Lani. <laughs> so, so just a quick answer to uh, Mbulungeni. Sorry for my pronunciation. Um, uh, uh, Profnet, how much do the premiums cost? Um, we will be publishing that shortly. Uh, for this year, um, we have uh, two plan types that were available to, to, to Profnet clients. Um, and I'm actually looking over my shoulder of 255 a month and 515 a month, but that had additional uh, uh, tremendous value adds into private practice specifically. And we will be introducing a tier below that, um, which will be specifically focused on unlocking the uh, medical malpractice insurance um, uh, 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 
a product that we're supporting. Um, but also, more importantly, it will be a low premium, but it will in fact assist in covering uh, the elements relating to your risk management, the online training, uh, the documents you need, and all the rest that you need to do to make sure that you're compliant and that we manage that risk together with you. Um, so look, watch the space. We will be putting that out to market as well. Um, so please do drop us a mail just at, uh, to, to info at ProfNet Medical um, if you want us to give you an update on that one. But we'll have those numbers shortly for you as well. Cool, cool. Dion, I do think you know me too well because I was just watching my, my watch and watching the clock and I did notice that we are running out of time. So um, Michael and Richard and Dion, I'm actually going to circle back to all of you just for a closing remark. Um, but maybe before I do that, attendees, please, we want to hear from you and we would really appre appreciate your participation. I'm going to launch a very, very quick and short polling question and we just want to know from you, would you consider switching to a new MPI provider? And it's a quick yes or no answer. Please give us an indication and I'm gonna leave that running for a minute or so. And while you answer that, just a quick reminder about what's coming up next week. We've had a, an incredible response with regards to our series on practice management and a lot of the providers actually want even more information. Can you believe it? So we'll be hosting another webinar next week on how to take your practice from successful to significant, how to take it from good to great. Um, and join us again next week when Bharti Harps, Vice President of the Biokinetics Association of South Africa, and he's got an immense passion for the subject, will be joining us again. And I'm sure um, the session, we will be able to get it accredited again for one CEU. Obviously, as per usual, you can book on our website, easymed.solutions, or just keep an eye out for the invitation via email or SMS, which will be coming your way shortly. But guys, I think it is enough from my side. Um, we need to wrap up. I think there's not too many more coming in. I'm gonna end the poll, and I do would like to share the information with you, actually. I'm sharing, sharing the results as we speak. And as you can see there, close to uh, nearly 80% of people said they would really consider switching to a new malpractice insurance provider or a, a medical professional indemnity product. And guys, I think that bodes very well for you. So perhaps if we, we've got about three minutes left, um, first of all, thank you very much from my side for your time this afternoon. But Richard, let's perhaps start with you. One sentence just to wrap things up and then I'll hand it over to Michael and then followed by Dion. Yeah, I think one sentence to, to sum up from my side is Chakras and Risk is probably the largest independent South African brokerage. Um, we have offices around the country and we specialize only in liability insurance. We don't do your car or your grandmother as Michael John alluded to earlier. Um, so we we specialize in this game and I think everyone can see from the questions and answers. Uh, we really do have all the answers for you and understand the market perfectly. So get in touch with us. We'd love to assist. Thank you, Richard. Michael, a last word from you. Thanks everyone. I would just personally like to thank you all um, for your attendance at today's event and for giving Genoa the opportunity to, to address you. Um, I think at the, at the peak we had an excess of 300 and Hundred odd members um, in attendance. Um, like when you deal with Shackleton Risk Management, when you deal with Genoa Underwriting Managers, you're dealing with a wealth of expertise and specialists in the in the liability space and the professional indemnity environment. That, for me, as a professional myself, I'm an attorney, is um, is highly important. You you do want to be dealing with specialists so that you know at all times that you're getting the best advice. So thank you to Lani and to and to Dion for for uh, joining us in today. Um, it's been a pleasure addressing everyone and answering questions. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thanks for having us. Michael, thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, just some closing remarks. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Um, uh, the, the reason we had this session today, and uh, we did we did recognize that it, we're compromising on our CPD points and, and, and drawing people in for that purpose and that reason. But, um, you know, uh, ProfNet has really just been looking out to find a superior product in the market, uh, finding partners that can help us bring a superior product to market, for not only for our, for our clients, to the ProfNet clients, um, and we hold quite a few policies in that, and we want to make sure that we give them even better um, uh, uh, value. 
uh, for, for their cover, um, but also for the market as a whole. I mean, these ripples are going to go through, not just in the ProfNet clientele, but broader than that. Uh, we are focusing on the healthcare market, excluding the specialists at this point. That's, that's not a core focus for us. Um, but for all the rest of the healthcare professionals, that is really what we're looking at for now and making sure we get that in place for 2021. Um, we want to assure everybody that, uh, you know, we're out there boxing for you uh, to try and find that best product at the best value. And we want to bring that forwards and we look forward to, to sharing that information with you uh, shortly. Um, and, uh, and, and, and rest assured that we're going to have a, a, an, an incredible solution in place for you before the end of the year. So no need to panic, no need to stress. Uh, we'll make sure we get you the best value. And, uh, and thank you to Shackleton and Genoa for, for joining us on this journey. Um, and we hope we can get some, 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 some finality on those, those wordings and pricing so we can get that out to the market soonest. Thanks, Fantastic. Guys. Looking forward to a Thanks product everyone. that really takes into account the, the modern healthcare practice and modern healthcare provider. Guys, that is all from us. I did share the contact information again in the chat functionality, so you can go and copy and paste it from there. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see each other again next week, same time, same place. I believe that's the 19th of November. We'll see you at 4 o'clock for another wonderful discussion. And don't forget to, to wear your masks. <laughs> Stay safe, everyone. Take care. Goodbye. Thanks, Lani. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, 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 Richard. Cheers, Dion. Cheers, Lani. Bye-bye.